good morning. And when I say good morning, I mean early morning because this year we are taping our um, Chamber of Commerce, Cannon County Chamber Connection show at nine o'clock in the morning because I had to cancel the original one. So we're coming to you a little late this month, but that's okay. We're gonna get in everything that we can. The weather is finally turned from winter till summer. <laughs> I think somewhere along the line we miss spring, I'm not sure. But uh, we do welcome you and we hope that you enjoy watching the things and the people that make Cannon County make work. And there's a lot of them because it, it takes a village to, to make the things that happen in Cannon County happen and we're real proud of that. I'm real proud of that. Um, you know, school is will be out in a week or so so uh, if you have any jobs out there for teenagers, uh, there is also uh, people looking to do volunteer work because they have applied for the community college that has the two-year free tuition, but um, they do have to have some volunteer work hours to count to get that. So keep that in mind whenever you have something that you want done. Uh, you can contact the schools right now and ask, um, especially the high school mainly, and ask who is the contact person for that. But usually the kids, will, the students will tell you if they need those hours. So just, just keep that in mind. And we do want to take this opportunity to congratulate all of the seniors that are graduating this year. Um, that's a milestone. Now you just got to look forward because it's not over. You're going to have to have something more in order to um, be productive in the future years. So we do want to uh, congratulate all of you because I know you've worked hard to get to this point and we're all real proud of you. Um, one of the guests that I have today, well, I have two or three, but one of the guests that I have today is uh, Pastor John Hembry with the First Methodist Church that's located on High Street. And these people at this church keep busy year round. Uh, they're one of those members of the village that go above and beyond the call of duty to make everything work. And um, Brother Hembry, Tell us what you've got coming up this summer. All right. I'm delighted to be here and to share uh, with you. The uh, big news for us is that the Project Transformation Summer Day Camp is coming back again this year to our facilities. And uh, this is a fun and free summer day camp that operates Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. in the morning until 3 p.m. in the afternoon for children in the first through the sixth grade, and they're rising students, so if your child is going into the first grade or going into the sixth grade, anywhere in between, they're welcome to register for this camp. And what the activities for the day will include, uh, two, two free meals, we provide uh, breakfast and lunch, and then there's an afternoon snack as well. Uh, then the students will work on games, crafts, arts, music, dance, and reading. Uh, also, there's playtime outside if it's not too hot. Well, you uh, cram a lot into those hours, don't they, you? They do. They keep, they keep them moving throughout the day, and they go through different sessions and into different groups. <coughs> and one of the big portions of their day is reading exercises. And this is uh, something that is the highlight of Project Transformation. It really focuses on helping students to maintain or improve their reading level over the summer. As most teachers know, many students will regress in their reading over the summer because they're not being active in reading, and so many of them will go backwards over the summer, and it takes the first couple of months of the school year to get kind of caught back up. And some of them may not get caught back up, and each year as they go to another grade, they seem to fall further and further behind. And so this uh, summer day camp that has an emphasis on reading uh, takes the child and has an opportunity throughout the day for them to sit down with an adult and pick a book from their own choice. We have a library right now that's 
about 12 or 1300 books. We're still accumulating books so they get new ones all the time. But they can go to a shelf and pull off a book that's in their reading level and sit down with an adult and read to them that book. And then of course the adult will help them if they have any problems. And that's a big part of the day. And through this last year, uh, we were able to not only have every one of our students maintain but improve their reading level over the summer months. 100% of the students that attended maintained or improved their reading level over the summer. They're, little, they're given a little test as they come in and a little test as they go out so we can have some way of gauging how it's really going, you know, a measurement so we can really tell. and. Um, so this is uh, something we're really encouraged about because this is something that's so vital to the growth of our students and to their being able to advance, as you said just a moment ago, to get to them that point if they can graduate from high school and maybe move on to another level. This reading is essential for them. And it so is. that's what a big part of this summer uh, day camp does. Now there is a $10 activity fee per child per summer. And there is a limit on that. So for an example, it's, it's capped at $30 a family. So if you have five children or grandchildren that are going to come, you'd only pay $30 activity fee for the whole summer. Right. And uh, if there's a family that has a struggle with that, we'll work with them on that. We don't want to get, we don't want to turn anybody away that needs to come and wants to be a part. Uh, and uh, Do you have a limit on that? We right. do, Carolyn. That's, uh, thank you for asking. We have a limit of 80. Okay. So once we hit that ceiling, we're, we're tapped out for the summer. So we have just a, a, a short period of time here before summer begins, as you just mentioned. We register people on Tuesdays and Thursday afternoons from 3 to 6 in the evening at the Church Fellowship Hall on 502 West High Street. And so people can come in during that time, ask questions, get an application. It's a very simple application, just a couple of pages. But they'll fill out an application and we'll get their student enrolled for the summer day camp. And then there'll be a family orientation on the Sunday before camp begins, Sunday afternoon before camp begins at 2 o'clock that afternoon, there'll be a family orientation for everyone who has a student registered so they can come and hear all about what they're going to be doing and kind of what their expectations are and what to expect and that kind of thing. So that's coming up as well. So the camp begins on Monday, June the 4th, and it concludes on Thursday, July the 26th. So it runs eight weeks during the summer. And uh, uh, somebody said, uh, for example, one question I heard the other day, somebody said, well, we're going to be gone on vacation for the second week or something like that. Can my child still attend? Yes, you need to get your child enrolled. And as long as we know that child is going to be on vacations out of town, we understand they're, they're missing because they're on vacation. They not they not just dropped out. Right. We'll hold their spot for them. So that that's not a problem. Somebody else said, well, because of custody issues, we only have our child every other week. Mm -hmm. And so as long as we're below the limit of 80, we can still accommodate that child and that student as well. So uh, if you have any situations that might be unusual like that and you're uncertain about whether your student or whatever could attend, just come by or call us and we'll be happy to talk to you about it. It's really... It's it's really not simple with the family concept anymore. Yeah. You know, it, right. there's other there's so many other things right. that are involved in this that you kind of have to think out of the box and think about everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I think this is a great program. How many did you have last year? Do you know? We had uh, 72 enrolled well, last year. You were year. about yeah. at yeah. your, and that was the first that year. That was the first year, right. right. A lot of people were uncertain about it. They just didn't really know what it was. But now, since their students have attended, and they've told their friends, and they've said, well, we want to go next year. And so, really, in the next week or so, we're really going to get hit with a lot of right. people coming back. You know, you think it kids anymore when my kids were out for the summer when they were young they'd go outside and play and everything well it things have changed anymore now the cell phone has taken over because that is i think children will probably be born in the future with one velcro to them i don't know but it takes up that play time and they get they actually get bored after a while this is great because I used to substitute teach and 
I want to tell you, if there was a break coming up of any kind, um, Christmas break, you didn't get much out of the children a week before or a week after because you had to get them acclimated back to the routine uh, when they came back. So yes, over summer vacation, even though they're shorter than they used to be, they have a, it takes a while to get them all back to what they're going to school for. And uh, let me mention something here because you brought up, you said something that just made me think about. Uh, some people ask about kind of who's in charge, who supervises them. Well, Project Transformation recruits nationally, hires, interviews, hires, and background checks. Uh, young adults who are working toward their degree in uh, some sort of service or community outreach. Uh, could be they, they may be teachers in training. They may mm -hmm. be currently in att attending college to be a teacher. Uh, and they go through an extensive process uh, and they'll hire eight uh, full-time interns that will come and spend their summer in Woodbury and spend every day with these children to help nurture them, guide them, train them, teach them, encourage them, love them, and help them to read. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a great uh, uh, opportunity for the students of our county that wouldn't normally have something like that. This, this program represents just that summer program for interns and all the related expenses and so forth. It represents about a $30,000 investment in our community and for the children of our community. And so I'm very excited that we're able to bring Project Transformation back another year. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing all their smiling faces as they begin here in just a couple of more weeks. Oh, I think as time goes on, this program will increase in popularity. I don't see it failing. Mm -hmm. I really don't. But you know, uh, like I say, you're, you're the pastor of the First Methodist Church, and they do so much for the community. During the summer, you have a backpack program where you provide food uh, for the children over the weekend, because unfortunately, we do have children in the county, like any other county, that may not eat real well if they're not in school. They may not eat at all. And this is something that this church has been involved in for some time. Um, how do you finance that, okay. Brother Hamburg? One thing we became aware of um, here in the county is that there is a significant need uh, to help children who are food insecure. Uh, statistics reveal that one out of four children in Cannon County are not certain about where their next meal is coming from. And this is called food insecurity. And so we've been working on this uh, for many years now. And one of the things that we do that you just brought up is the school backpack program. And all during the school year, we provide a backpack of nutritious food items, which is uh, basically a gallon Ziploc bag that goes inside of a backpack. And it, it contains protein and nutritional items and milk, juice, snack items, different things of that nature that can help sustain a child over the weekend if there's not enough food in the house to help them through with that. And uh, this is a program that is a very valuable, much needed program. Uh, this year we're packing on an average of 300, and 300 to 350 bags a week of food for every school in the county. And uh, a student can uh, apply at the first of the year. Uh, notes are sent home for the parents, and if they want their child included, they can just enroll them in the program. And uh, they'll get a backpack delivered to the school, a backpack of food, I should say, delivered to the school each week for them to take home on the weekends and uh, help them through that time. And that particular program is uh, one that's also very costly. Uh, and we uh, weren't sure how that was going to be funded in the very beginning in terms of we just had individuals sign up at the very beginning. We started with one school. We started over at Auburn and did Auburn Elementary. And um, we just thought, well, we can get individuals to sponsor a child. So people signed up to sponsor a child, and we got that covered. But then the next year, another principal said, well, would you, would you bring that to our school? And then another principal, and it was soon everybody wanted the backpack program to come. So we thought we were going to have to do something else to help get the funding for that. And so that was how the Cannon County um, thrift, uh, Outreach and Thrift Store was created. And that's up at 214 McCrary Street, right next to Napa Auto Parts. And uh, that is a, um, 
operation that uh, is staffed mostly by volunteers. Uh, people donate items to the uh, thrift store. Those items are cleaned and uh, made ready for sale and set out and displayed in a way that people can shop like they would in a department store. It's a nice shopping experience. It is. <laughs> and they have furniture, dishes, toys, children's clothes, adult clothes, shoes, um, a little bit of everything they have up there. And of course, all the money goes toward the backpack program. We support all in the county right here. We, we uh, last year, in fact, this particular uh, backpack program, the food cost, because there's no other cost to the backpack program mm -hmm. except for food. There's no labor that everybody volunteers, volunteers their time. Yeah. Even the drivers volunteer their time and the gas. So there's no cost except for food. But last year, just to give you an idea, I won't know what the total is this year till the end of this month and we total up all of the bills for this school year. But last school year, it represented an investment of $67,000 in the community. Wow. And that was all well, the That food. even catches me off guard. Yep. 67,000 and I imagine this year it's going to be close to about that same figure and that's funded through the operation of the thrift store and also um, we do provide some funding to Cannon County Save and we make a little check to them every month to help them as well for the victims of domestic abuse. Right. And so um, that's the operation. All is funded locally here and people make donations. Their donations stay here locally and we use that to purchase the food and make uh, make these food bags throughout the year and we're just so grateful for everybody's support in the community and we're always looking for volunteers and you talked about student service hours that we've had a number of students do their service hour uh, service hours up at the thrift store because there's lots of opportunities for them to move things around right. and help uh, well that's exactly what i was talking about yeah, is something like yeah. that that's what they need that's great it's perfect and we've had a lot of students do that and really enjoyed their time there and a couple of them want to come back and keep volunteering just because they like to do that. See, that's what you hope for the outcome to be. Because I don't know anymore if community service, if the younger people really realize what that is. And so they don't really, they're not real anxious to jump into something like that. But once they've done it, you know, some of it, it may be, some of it may be harder work than others, but they usually say, well, I could do this again. You know, right. so this is right. this is a good thing. <laughs> uh, and so that's a big part of the food-related ministries that we do. Then we have uh, uh, our perishable food giveaway, which happens on the fourth Thursday of every month out at the farmer's market, fourth Thursday of the, every month. The one for June comes up June the 28th. Right. right. June 28th. And the truck usually arrives between 1030 and 11. And just as soon as our volunteers can get it unloaded and the food sorted and set out and displayed, we open the line and people can come through and get whatever they want or need. And uh, it's usually a lot of really nice uh, uh, produce, um, uh, dairy products, uh, breads and pastries. Um, um, a lot of times we'll have big containers of potatoes and right. onions and squash and different things like that. That uh, is, we, we get those things from through Second Harvest, who with their community partners like Publix and Walmart and places like that, when their produce has reached a certain age and it is about to Get, get to the expiration. They'll give that to Second Harvest. Second Harvest, Harvest sends it out to partners like us, and then we distribute it in the community to anyone who needs food. And they're welcome to come and, and get it. No yeah. qualification. No you qualification. We don't do any screenings or look for driver's license or anything like that. If you want to come and get some food, please come and help yourself. And there's a big crowd yep. because I'm my office is down there and I see them, yep. and there's a big crowd that kind yep. of shows up for that. And, you know, we always have plenty, so you know we encourage people to come by and get some it usually starts like i said by the time we get the food sorted and ready to go it's usually about 11 15 or so when we start opening the line and usually by one o'clock it's all gone yeah so it, it it's not a big window of time but there's usually plenty so we want to encourage people to they come start out. showing up at about 9 30. yeah yeah it's 28. yeah 
And so uh, that's another major thing that we do. And then once a quarter, uh, we purchase a truckload of food and we bring that tractor trailer truck in and we set it out in the parking lot of the church at 502 West High Street and we have a bunch of volunteers. Usually we'll have 40 or 50 volunteers that will come in from different churches and groups and organizations that will help and we'll put all that food out and when the cars come they'll be directed through that gauntlet of food and they stop at a couple of places through there and then the people will put the food into the vehicle for them and they'll drive out the other end with a trunk load or back seat load full of food. Right. And this is, uh, you know, staple items, canned goods, dry goods, and also perishable goods. So there's a whole variety of food. And we do that about once a quarter. Now, we just finished the last one just happened. And so now I'm in the fundraising stage for the next sequence. And I don't have those dates yet, but I'll have them very soon of when we're going to start the next ones in the fall going through the summer, into the summer of next year. Right. Got to plan ahead for this, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, is there anything else y'all do <laughs> that you want to tell me about? Because this is a very active group right here, and they do. It's all good. I can't think of a, a anything that's derogatory about it. It's all helpful. Somebody is going to get helped from it, whether they're young, old, in between. And how can you argue with somebody that's going to take the time and the initiative to either feed your kids or to give them a place to come that's safe, you know where they are, and be active, and, and everybody needs help reading. When you're young, that's the main thing. If you can't read, you're going to have a difficult time in any grade you go into. So I just can't say enough, and I know that the Methodist Church is not the only church in Cannon County that helps people. I know that. But I do know that I think this church, even though it's not a huge church, is very active in the community. We're a very small congregation. Everybody works really hard. I, I know they do. <laughs> so I do. I know many of them. And I wanted to say one do. thing about this. You just made me think about it. I want to say one thing about this. This is not a Bible camp. This right. is, we're not teaching doctrine or theology. We're not doing anything like that. So I don't want anybody to be a little bit skeptical about whether or not we're trying to, uh, you know. Brainwash them. Yeah, or something <laughs> like that. This is a camp where kids come together and do fun things, enjoy their day, experience relationships with one another, learn how how to develop relationships and how to be a leader. They teach them how to, uh, uh, like I said, read, help them with their reading and other skills for life, and and they get loved on, and that's it. So it's it's any denomination yes, is welcome. Absolutely, any at all. Yeah, and also we welcome other churches in the community who would like to serve as reading volunteers for a week, and that's where they come in and sign up, and, right. and we'll work with the children for one week of time and volunteer their time to sit down and read with the children themselves. And they're more than welcome to come and do that. We well, I think that's great. I really do. I'm gen I genuinely mean that. I'm kind of community oriented anyway. And like I say, all of our churches do a great job. But this one, just the things that I do, and maybe it's because I'm more aware of what this church does, kind of step up there. And I, I appreciate that. And I think most of the people in the community do too. Thank you, Carolyn. I thank you for being with us, and if you all decide to do anything else, I need you to call me, and we'll <laughs> come back on here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Okay. I didn't forget about you. <laughs> I'm still here. We have uh, you take and tell them your, what your title is. Uh, my name is Kristen Jones. I'm the Family and Consumer Science Agent at UT Extension. I also do a little bit of 4-H work with Sarah. Um, but the majority of my programming is in family and consumer science. So what you got going on? The year's about up? It is. Well. The school year. But you yeah. don't really do the 4-H, do you? I do a little bit of it. I do right. clubs at Woodbury Grammar School. So I've wrapped those up for the year. Um, Sarah does a lot more work with the youth. Um, and I do more any age all age groups. So uh, today I was actually going to talk about um, a strength training program. This is an exercise program for older adults that I have started at the Senior Center. Um, and it is an eight-week program. 
and we're actually piloting this program. It's brand new. There's only 10 counties in Tennessee that have this right now that are working with it this year, and then hopefully next year we'll get <coughs> some more um, involvement with that. But it's going really well so far. I've been really excited about this. Um, so eight-week program we do twice a week at the Senior Center on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and I really appreciate the Senior Center working with me on that. They've been great to work with, and they're always excited to get new programs in there for their participants. Um, but this one is, it works on strength and also balance and flexibility. So some benefits of the strength training, they're getting increased muscle strength, of course, improved balance and flexibility. It also strengthens bones, relieves arthritis, promote weight maintenance, helps lift depression, reduce stress, and reduce the risk of heart disease if they participate in programs like this. And the Senior Center is great about exercise. They've got several exercise programs that go they on. They do. Um, but they are very welcoming to host this one, um, to try it out. So. You know, different programs seem to fit different people. Some are going to be interested in this one that are still interested in the others, or there may be some that pick and choose, you know, which one they want to do. But it's worked out really well so far. And this one is pretty simple in that we have eight basic exercises that we focus on. And we focus on these main eight exercises and the muscles that they target to train. Um, at the beginning of the program, they have a fitness assessment that they can do where we do, um, we'll test some, do some balance tests and um, one of them is you do so many sit-ups, how, how many can you do in so many in a, in a minute and then we come back at the end of the program and That's retest. That's easy for me too. So <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the program we'll retest so they can see how much they've improved over the eight weeks. So, um, but they've enjoyed doing it so far. I've got a lot of good feedback They have on a it. great crowd at the Senior Center. They They're kind of up for anything. They really are. Yeah. <laughs> and I had several that came in the first class that said, well, I don't, I'm not, I don't know about this, but I'm going to try it today. <laughs> I might come back. <laughs> I said, okay, but we've had really good participation. I well, think I've good. had over 15 sign up for it. And we do have a good group that has been at every class. Yeah. So it's, it's going really good. Um, it's one of my favorites already. So I'm excited well, to share with go. the rest of, uh, well, what else will you folks. be doing this summer? Um, I am in the very beginning stages of getting into some canning programs. Um, this is something that I haven't offered before, so I'm new at it. I'm going to tiptoe into it, but <laughs> we're going to get it going. Um, but I recently uh, was at a food preservation training where we did some hands-on activities, and we did, let's see, strawberry preserves. We canned tomatoes that day. We did green beans and some squash pickles. So those are our hands-on as agents, what we did and took home with us. But um, so I'm thinking I would like to get one start, get some canning classes started here. But I'd like to start out with just the preserves, maybe do some strawberry jam, maybe as the first um, class. And because I, I would like to see what kind of interest we have. And this would be for beginners of course, and see if we can get what kind of a group I can get out of that. And um, so I'm talking to some people trying to see what time would be good and things like that right now. So I'd like to do that in June, I believe. Okay. Now, well, that's great. Um, and you, we do have, and I get calls about this, we do mm -hmm. have a certified kitchen, right? And yes. it is at the extension office. Yes, absolutely. Now, maybe I'm asking you something that's not your... Um, <laughs> not what you're qualified to talk about, but that qualified kitchen or certified exactly what does that mean and what do you have to do? Is that open for the public to use? It is. Um, the majority of the people that rent it work with the Tennessee Department of Agriculture and they are making things for resale purposes. Okay. We get a lot around farmer's market time wanting to use it um, to sell their product at farmers markets. Right. So that's this is our busy season with the kitchen. Um, it's starting to get pretty busy there. We have a new um, 
new renter that I'm excited about that does beef jerky. So they will rent our kitchen for about three days at a time, every six weeks or so. And they um, do beef jerky, package it, and then they'll resell it at uh, farmer's markets. Oh, so great. The office well, smells good. delicious, you know. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we have people downstairs in the kitchen. So well, they're not they're down making. there skinning any animals oh, or no. anything, right? <laughs> they're marinating <laughs> and packaging and things like that. But it's a lot of fun. Um, I enjoy working with the kitchen. Okay. Well, but. just so I know, because I do have calls about that, and okay. they want to know where it is, first of all, and then they want to know what are the qualifications to use it or what do you have to do. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Actually, there is a rent for it then, right? It is. It's $40 a day okay. to rent that kitchen. And you mentioned something else, and you may know more about this than I do, because, um, well, the weather has a lot to do with the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year it was late due to the weather, and this year because of the rain, and like I say, two weeks ago it was cold. Um, <laughs> It's probably going to be June before they open up again this year, huh? I believe so. I don't know that for certain. Um, Bruce is the. Well, I uh, think Bruce told me market. that it I might I've, might be June. Yes, I think I've heard him say that as well. Um, and a lot of it was due to the weather, the rainy season that we had. So. Okay. What else have you done this year? I know you haven't been there long, have you? Not too long. I'm coming up on a year. Well, so. I thought it was about a year ago that. Yes, you I've first been, started that, so you've learned a lot, huh? Oh, I'm learning every day. <laughs> There's something new every day, but um, it's a lot of fun. I really love working there, and the programs that we have to offer are great. So I've been doing a lot of training and um, getting some programs set up. So Okay. And how can they get a hold of you, Kristen? At the Extension office. Um, just ask for Kristen Jones. If you call, um, and my email address is actually K Pratt. that's got my maiden name on there, P-R-A-T-T, -T, and the number four at utk.edu. And that number is 615-563-2554. That would help you can me get to it. say the <laughs> You can get number. in touch Thank with her can. that way, too. You can. <laughs> and if you didn't get any of those numbers, then you can call the chamber, and I'll be glad to give them to you. And you're still here, Mr. Embry, so... What is a phone number where they might be able to get a hold of you? 615-563-2135. Oh, it's not the one that's on the 2135. All right. Well, I appreciate both of you being here, and this is certainly, you've got two areas here that are community-oriented and do a lot for our community, and they're not the only ones because you have, everybody works together, that's what it takes, because you have, <clears throat> as Brother Ember had mentioned, they work with domestic violence to help them out, and then you've got the Senior Center and the Extension Office working together to supply these schools and sessions and everything. And then the library is a big part of it, too. And I was hoping to have Marsha on here in a few minutes and tell you a few things. But uh, they also have a summer reading program. Uh, they also have different things for the children during the summer. So don't forget about them when you're thinking about, OK, where can I take the kids today? Because they have a lot of summer events at our library. We have a great library, too. I thank both of you for thank being you. on here, and you're thank welcome you. to stay. I'm going to go over some other things that are happening, or if you need to leave, you can do that, too. <laughs> All righty. May is an exciting month if the weather holds out good. we Ah, oh, here's Marcia right now. We're going to bring her right on in here. I was getting ready to talk about you, whether you're here or not. <laughs> That'd be fine. That'd be fine. Uh, how are you? I do have. I have Marsha Petty here, and she is the director for the library system in Cannon County. And uh, we were just going over some of the events that would be summer um, oriented for adults and for children. But the library has an extensive mm -hmm. venue for the summer, don't they? Yes, we do our summer reading program. We're excited 
this year too, we have about seven weeks that we have um, professional programmers, events coming in, um, professional storytellers. Of course, we have Bob Tarter, and he'll bring in a set of animals. How long has that little fly been flying around? <laughs> Get out of here. And, I um, think they just let him in. In fact, we start June 2nd. Um, sign up. We do ask you to sign up so that we can kind of gauge how many people would be coming to the events. And um, that starts on May 30th. And I believe school is out like May 25th, something like that. So it's the week after that. And uh, June 2nd, which is a Saturday, is Bob Tarter. And he's bringing um, echoes and howls. So to me, it sounds like some birds, echoes, maybe a, wolf. <laughs> maybe a bat, a coyote, <laughs> something, a dog. You know, he does have a, a English lab that he's been training. And she's real sweet. She, he's yeah. brought her a couple times. She's little playing. kids love dogs. Yes. I brought my grandkids over here when they were real little. And I forget who that was that brought their dog in with them and I have dogs but <laughs> they were so excited about that dog yeah. that he brought in you know yeah and uh, the next week June 7th we're gonna have music fun and that's with John Salloway he's a local artist he's I know wonderful John. wonderful he is and he's going to um, build a, a children's program and that would be fun um, we're also trying to um, maybe get together a teen group that would do a jamming session with him um, I haven't talked to him. It's not on the list. Okay. Right? That's something we're... And so if you're interested, give the library a call. Let me know. Um, Are you just talking school. about... Okay. That'd well, there's... Yeah. yeah. And just um, come in and play with him. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he could teach him a few things And because uh, he's in a band. Um, oh, and he's in more than one, one band. Yeah. <laughs> he's in a bunch of bands. Um, <laughs> yeah, he is. He's He's... Very gifted. Um, and then June 14th, we have the Nashville Zoo coming. And then June 23rd, we have Jill Thatcher. She's a very popular puppet storyteller. And uh, the 28th, we're going to have the first responders and hopefully Smokey the Bear. Uh, July 12th is Mr. Barry and Sam the Turtle. Now, he's new for us this year, but he is wonderful. Wonderful. He is a turtle puppet. Yeah. So, and, um, and then... The close of the uh, events would be June 19th, July 19th, excuse me, July 19th. So uh, we're excited. It's a big program. Starts Pizza. June 2nd. Pizza party. Yeah. Everybody gets excited about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, what else is going on? I mean, that's a lot, but those are like one day things. Now, can they come in during the week? And of course, you have computers, you have books galore. You but know. part of the program is uh, we really are trying to encourage the children to keep reading through the summer so they keep their skills up for school. And part of that is we're going to, um, they can do reading logs. They can say, hey, I will read two books in the next seven weeks. And then they'll, they'll, that will earn them something. It's okay. Like the pizza party. Right. <laughs> and so, um, and it's a way to, uh, you know, finally children can read just for what they want. I think the schools are doing a wonderful job. They read, I, I know in second grade, they get to read really exciting books. They right. like their books. And um, it's a chance for the children to keep coming in, come to the library, see what we have. We also do crafts. We have little maker space where they can make crafts. Um, there's a, there is something, we're going to continue, I think, story time during that time. Uh, it will be moved to Tuesdays. Excuse but, me. Uh, yeah, no, the library has different programs. Um, I guess I'm... To pique their interest yes, is what you're... And, and to encourage them. We really are trying to encourage them to get enthusiastic about coming to the library, right. about reading, and seeing, and you're right, we have computers. They can use the computers. So. As well as adults. The computers are yes. for adults. And we do, we do include the, the adults in the um, summer reading program. We also allow them to read books to earn things. So. Oh, well, all right. Yeah. I don't read as much as I used to. No. I know how to read, but yeah. I don't read as much as I used to. You know, I and did. Yeah, I did bring a couple books. That, okay. You know, I don't know um, how many people follow us on Facebook, but um, Patrick has been taking a book a week to 
um, spotlighted. And uh, this this week was Thunder Thunder Dog Week, and this is a remarkable story. He's a blind man, and he was caught in the towers. Oh, okay. But before then, his parents raised him. Uh, they just let him go at it. He was totally blind. He rode a bicycle around the neighborhood. <laughs> you know, he, I can see and I can't do that. <laughs> he's a, it's an incredible, incredible story of a man. And so we're spot, spotlighting that book. And also I wanted to let everybody know the Western genre has been very hard to get new Westerns in. Louis L'Amour is gone. Zane Gray is gone. You know, the what great shame. writers. And, um, and uh, Jay Johnson's getting older, but his son, William, is starting to write books. Oh, and, okay. Um, I have um, good advice that this is an excellent Western. So we got two excellent Westerns. Maybe <laughs> they'll make a movie out of it because the movies that are Westerns anymore, since I think the last one that I remember was Lonesome Dove, that was that was a good Western. It was long. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you had to watch it over a couple of days, I think. But it was a good Western, but they just don't make a lot of Westerns new. And I guess that's the same way with the books, too. I never thought about yeah, it. Yeah, the books, it was just real hard. And and, um, and we're hoping, um, we're trying to get more in, but I did want to mention that we do have some new books in. And, and the li and the Western books, Louis L'Amour and all, they sold, they did well. Mm -hmm. People, A lot of people read those. Mm -hmm. I went to a yard sale or something one time, and this man had, well, he had two boxes of nothing but westerns. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were, I don't know how many he wrote over his years, but I think it was quite a few. Yeah, <laughs> westerns are very popular at the library. Um, and animals. So, yeah, and we also have a large following of Amish books. Really? Mm hmm And the Christian books, yeah, we have uh, special sections, and those get checked out. Well, we have a lot of Amish people that have moved into surrounding counties and Cannon County, and that's fine. Uh, you know, they, have, they still have the wagons and the horses, and I know Warren County has a big uh, congregation out of Mount Around Morrison. I think that's great. I think it's they're taking their life in their own hands when they come out on a major highway. But as far as for seeing that and seeing the community that they have where they all help each other, I, the Mennonites are the same way. I really like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Like I say, I seen one coming down Woodbury Hill. He just, that little horse was just getting right along with all these cars and traffic and not a whole lot of area for them. <laughs> Those horses are remarkable. <laughs> they <Absolutely> are. Remarkable. <laughs> they are. Remarkable. Yeah. But I enjoy seeing them. I think it's, uh, I just like them. But anyway, well, anything else, Marcia, you yes. want to talk to us about? Yes, we have okay. another program that we're doing, and that's a pen pal program. Oh, okay. And we've got a contact in Scotland, another library in Scotland, that is doing this with us, and we're trying a few other places. Um, but you Children can come in and write a letter, and we will mail it to that library, and they'll pass it. You know, find somebody to be their pen pal. And so then, if oh, when great. they grow up and they want to go to Scotland, they've got a friend. There you go. <laughs> and they kind of know where they're going too, don't they? So that's another <laughs> project we're doing. I have a grandson who he said that if he, whenever he gets enough time, where he can take a vacation. Scotland is where he would like to go. Well, you know, a lot of us have um, ancestry. From yeah, Scotland. he does. Mine, you'd have to go out west. And Lots of Indians still out there. <laughs> but that's okay, too. Um, anything so else, Gordon? That's it. Well, just the story time on Thursday at 1030. And they schoolers. can always call the library yes. and find out. If you didn't get the date, you can always That's call. right. And we'll have little flyers little that they can take home, put on the refrigerator. There you go. For the summer reading. Yes. Put them right up there with the hours to the dump. <laughs> 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 That's what I get the most calls about, I think, <laughs> is when is the dump open? <laughs> well, Marcia, you're welcome to stay with me, or if you have to go, I've got to go over a few events. 
I didn't have a lot of event. I didn't have a lot of uh, guests today, so I thought, well, I'll have a hard time filling up the hour, but it doesn't look like I'm going to. <laughs> oh, good, good. I didn't take too much time. Oh. No, no, no. You're fine. I was glad you came in. Okay, May is almost over, and we're a little late this month getting the show uh, up and going. And so uh, I did want to tell you some of the things that are that you could still get on, because this will probably be on the air this week uh, sometime. So you'll be able to go to a few of these if you're interested. We just had the, uh, uh, this last weekend, we had the townwide yard sale. And I think it was a huge success. The first week it was scheduled for, it rained them out. But I believe this last weekend, there was a town full of people for that. So I'm sure that that event will continue. And also, um, we have something coming up that is, well, it's, I guess one of the things that's going to go on forever and ever, Bill Smith started this years ago, and it was called Cannon County Good Old Days. Well, the Senior Center has taken that over the last few years. It is a fundraiser for them, and they have all kinds of things planned for it. It will be on the square in Woodbury, and it opens up at on Friday at 12 noon on the square. Now, the school events will be at Dillon Park, and that will be from 10 till 12 on Friday the 18th. And then the Senior Center uh, will have their event starting at 12 noon, right around the square, and bring your own chair, bring you a fan, bring you an umbrella, whatever you need. But um, I'm not sure what the weather calls for this next weekend. But I'm sure whatever it is, it won't last all day. Uh, the music starts at 345 with Back Road Country Band. The Junior Miss Pageant is 5 to 630. Uh, then some more music and the Miss Teen Good Old Days will be 730 to 845. And they'll end up with the Porter and Noakes Band. Then on Saturday, the Cannonball Run, which is a 5K. We'll start at 7 o'clock in the morning until 9, the baby show at 9 until 11.30, and they get those babies in there early because they don't last long. I'm going to tell you, you don't, you don't have a happy crowd when you do that in the afternoon, especially if it's hot. Uh, 11 to 12 will be ballroom dance. There's a parade at 12 o'clock. Uh, some more dancers will be from 12.30 to 1.30, and... This brings in as many people as the baby show does, I do believe, and that's the dog show. And it will be at the backstage behind the courthouse from 2 to 4. Uh, music, Little Miss, Good Old Days, 3.30 to 4.30. Uh, some more music and Miss Good Old Days will be 6 to 7.30. And then the night will finish out with the Gilly Brothers. And um, so there's something for everyone. And one of the things that um, will be a little different this year is the Middle Tennessee Mule Skinner Show will be May 19th at Saturday at the fairgrounds, but they're going to combine with the good old days and there will be free wagon rides to and from the fairgrounds down to the good old days. So if you're at the good old days and you wanna go out and see some of the mule show, uh, there'll be a wagon that will come around, pull my mules, that will pick you up and take you out there. And then it'll be available for you to, to bring you back. Uh, we have a band that's going to be at the um, Art Center. And, of course, this will be on the 25th of May. Uh, right now, they're going to only do one show. It'll be 7.30 on, the tw on Friday the 25th. But they are also going to do a performance at the Good Old Days during the Miss Good Old Days pageant. And that Shake, Rattle, and Roll. And I went and seen this band last year. They do a tribute to Jerry Lee Lewis. The guy that does that's amazing. Elvis Presley, Carl Perkins, and Johnny Cash. And they are so good. So if you haven't got your tickets to see them at the Art Center, 
please call and reserve your seat because if anybody went last year, they'll come out again this year. And also, um, the tribute to the Beach Boys, uh, Sail On is the name of that. And that is going to be the 19th and the 20th at the, at the Art Center. And it'll be 7.30 in the evening on Friday and then, um, I'm sorry, on Saturday. And then on Sunday will be a matinee at 2 o'clock. So you can call the Art Center and see if there's any tickets for that. That's a very popular concert, too. This is the first time they've had the Beach Boys tribute. And I guarantee you there's a lot of Beach Boy fans out there. So, And then, of course, to end out the... Um, year as always they're going to have a uh, cruise in I mean well that too we're going to have a cruise in on the 26th around the square 4 to 7 30 uh, any cars trucks unique vehicles everybody's welcome last month it was a great day in April but it was a little windy but we had a big crowd for being the first one so we hope that the word has gotten out there and we have more come. There's no admission. DTC is the one that sponsors this. The chamber presents it, but DTC is the main sponsor for this. And we always good to work with DTC. Also, the um, Cannon County Walking Horse Association will be holding their Memorial Day ride. And it will begin, you can see them ride through town on Saturday uh, the 26th and they meet out at the fairgrounds at 11 o'clock and the ones that want to ride through town and take the ride up to the campgrounds on uh, at Short Mountain. And this is a yearly thing. We have the Memorial Day ride and the Labor Day ride. They have a great campground up there. They have a horse show. They have all kinds of events anymore for kids. So this is something that if you ride a horse, or even if you don't, you can come watch them go through town. Not everybody has that, but that's good. Um, also, um, let's see, I, you know, I think that's about it for May. Now, the 2nd of June, you're going to have the Gasway Homecoming. Uh, that's a small town event, but they have a parade, they have music, they have food, they have a lot of fun over there. So. If you want to attend that, that will be on Saturday the 2nd. And then um, the next food giveaway will be at the farmer's market will be in June, will be the 28th. The cruise in in June will be the 23rd, and it's the same, 4 to 7.30 p.m. Uh, everybody welcome. Register your car for a door prize. Uh, we have a DJ. We have a lot of fun. Fishing tournament, the kids' fishing tournament, put on by the uh, Wildlife Tennessee Wildlife Resource Association. One of my favorite events. Little kids love to fish, and they keep getting things to. Uh, pe they have a big crowd. They stock the the river down at Dillon Park, right there behind the uh, water department, and. Um, yeah, you're not allowed to fish once they've stock it until it's over because you catch all the fish, then the little kids don't have a chance. But uh, Mark Vance was um, will probably be on the next show. Of course, it'll be right close to uh, when this starts. And um, you'll have a big time. So if you've got little kids, I think it's up to age 12. Get them a fishing pole, bring them down there, let them catch some fish. They get so excited about that. Plus, they have goodie bags, and I believe that the American Legion will probably be helping them out again this year. And let's see, then we'll be getting into July 4th, and oh my gosh, um, that brings up all the fireworks show. The Lions Club One Night Walking Horse Show will be the 7th of July. I think there's going to be several fireworks shows. On the 30th of June, there will be a fireworks show at the Short Mountain Distillery. If you've never been up there, you need to go. That's a beautiful place. They have a great restaurant. Um, 
open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you can always take a tour if you want to, but they'll put on a good fireworks show up there too. So, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else that um, might be, oh, Becky Bueller, the 19th, May 19th, Becky Bueller and Nate Lee will perform at Birdsong Studio that's located on High Street um, in Woodbury. And she does a great job, has some great songwriters that come in here. Many of them are Nate, you're gonna recognize the names. Now there's limited seating here. The doors open at seven, the show open, starts at 7.30. That's at High Street, right next to the post office. And she'll have some more coming on during the year um, that you'll recognize them as well. One event that I don't know a lot about, but I think it's going on, someone called me several months ago about a spring fair that was going to be happening the May 22nd through the 26th at the fairgrounds. I haven't been able to find out exactly who's sponsoring this, but I believe that what this is, is a um, carnival. So if you're interested in a carnival, then they'll have carnival rides and you can, uh, I think Woodbury Drug Center on Main Street may have some wristbands if you're interested in taking your children to this. And I'll tell you what, I'm about out of time and I can't find anything else in here that I haven't told you about, except June 9th, the Senior Center will be taking a day trip and it will be to Franklin, and they will go to Franklin Farmer Market, lunch at Puckett's Boathouse Restaurant. Uh, shopping is on your own at the shops, and the trip will cost about $20. So if you're interested in going to Franklin, that sounds like a fun trip, really. Um, contact the Senior Citizen Center at 615-563-5304. Talk to them about it. They'll be glad to talk to you about it. Um, that's it. I'm done for the day, and I guess y'all are glad. But we will be happy to see you next month.